This video is a part of Experience Scaler for Free initiative. To get full content, please visit the link given in the description below. Now I'm going to be covering a few other sorting algorithms and then we'll do a few problems on these. Count sort is the easiest one. Count sort is when the elements that you are sorting, they are limited in range. Limited in range meaning, for example, I tell you, hey, you have characters A to Z. You have a lot of characters and you need to sort them. Or you only have numbers 0 and 1. Or you only have numbers from 1 to 20. Then what you do is instead of counting or basically maintaining like numbers themselves, you just count how many numbers. For example, I gave you an array of zeros and ones, right? So bunch of 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, etc, etc. And then I told you to sort this array. One very simple way would be I calculate the frequency of 0 and frequency of 1. This is basically exactly what count sort means, right? Like you're maintaining the count of the numbers themselves. So you, you say like, I'll count how many times 0 came. Let's say 0 came 10 number of times. And I'll count how many number of times 1 came. Let's say it came 5 number of times. Then I know my sorted array. My sorted array is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10 times. And then one, 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 five times. So one very common application of this is if I give you two strings and I ask you, are these strings anagrams of each other? Anagrams is like two strings are anagrams if they are just some or the other permutation of the same string. For example, if I give you a string banana and I give you another string, let's say is, this is not really a word, but I give you these two strings, right? And I ask you, are these anagrams of each other? Your answer will be yes, because they have the same count of N. There are two N's here, there are two N's here. They have same count of A. They have three A's here, there are three A's here. And they have same count of B. You know that you only have 26 different characters. So in a 26 array, array of size 26, you can maintain the counts of number of A's, number of B's, number of C's and so forth. And you can just compare the counts, right? So count sort is very simple. If you have limited number of numbers, if your range is very limited, you maintain the count of every single number you encounter. And then like you just print those numbers, those main number of times you go from start to beginning. So we are going to maintain a new array for zero and one. However, zero and one are just two, two numbers, two variables. So it is still order one space. If you only have, let's say 20 numbers, then it's just order of 20 space, which is not order N, right? Like it is not dependent on the number of numbers that you have in total. And let me maybe give you an example, right? And then I'll write code for it that will make it clearer. Very simple. Imagine I give you a string of characters, a string of characters, and I just ask you to sort that string of characters. For example, let's say the string is congratulations. Let's say that is the string. And then there were a bunch of bunch more characters as well. But like, let's just say that this is the thing. There could be let's say thousands and thousands of characters here, thousands, hundreds of thousands of characters. Now, one conventional way of sorting is like doing the bubble sort or the selection sort, etc. right? Which is a selection sort would be you figure out which is the smallest character, which is A, you shift A to the front. However, I mean, if there are a lot of characters that will take a lot of time. So what I say is, hey, by the way, I know that the kind of letters could only be from A to Z, correct? I have A, B, C, D, E, F till Z, correct? There are only 26 characters possible, 26 different characters possible. So if I somehow maintain the character count, Right? I have only 26 characters. If I have an array, which has the count of what are the number of A's here, what are the number of B's here, C here, and so forth. For example, when I encounter C, I say, let's increase the count of character C by one. So C's count becomes one. And I mean, this is, this could be just be an array, right? Because any character can be mapped from a number from zero to 26. So I just maintain an array of size 26, which is all initialized to zero to begin with. When I encounter C, I increase the count of C by one. Then I encounter O, let's say O is somewhere here. I increase the count of O by one. When I encounter N, I increase the count of N by one. With R, I'll again increase the count of R by one. A, A will become one. Let's say when I encounter A again here, A's count will become two. So that way, I mean, I'm just maintaining count of every character, right? Like, and uh, if I have to write code for this, I would just do very simple. I would say that, you know what, like I have a array of size 26, which is initialized to zero. This is C++ format, but like Java, etc., it will be similar. And then I just say, you know what, like, let's assume that the character is CH and I go over this string str. And I just say that ARR of 
CH minus A, which will now give me a number from 0 to 26 plus plus. At the end of it, I'll have frequency count of every character. And then like the sorting is very simple. I just go character by character, right? So I just go from for I is 0 to 26. I look at the count of the current character. Like for example, when I is 0, then I'm looking at the count of A. So what I do is I take a loop from 0 to ARR of I, whatever is the count. And I print A plus I those many number of times. So what will happen is if the count of A was 2, then this will print A twice. Then let's say if the count of B was 1, then it will print B. If let's say the count of C was 3, then it will print C three times and so forth. So all I'm doing is I'm just counting the numbers, frequency of the numbers. And then I'm just printing in them those many number of times going in the order of numbers. Does that make some sense? Count sort, how is it working? As long as the range is limited. For example, let's say if, if you have numbers from minus 20 to 20, even then you can use the array, right? Because you can just say that every single number num corresponds to the index num plus 20. So when you encounter num, you just say, you know, ARR of num plus 20 plus plus. And when you print, then like for ARR of i is count, you print i minus 20. In general, if you see for doing this, if you have a range of numbers, let's say the range is r, count sort takes order of r memory, right? If the range from min to max of the array, if the range max minus min, if this is r, then it takes you order of R memory, right? Because you need those many number of counts variable, right? If R is small, small ish, for example, let's say if R is thousand or 10,000 or hundred thousand or 1 million, if let's say R is up to 1 million, then you can use count sort because you can maintain the counts and therefore like it will still run. However, let's say if the numbers were not limited, if, if, if there could be any integer, then you can't use count sort. Count sort is only applicable when the numbers are limited in the range. As I showed with counting characters in a string, because characters are limited. Characters can only have 26 different values. So it is not done in place in the sense that you're still counting the number of A's, number of B's and C's, and then you can fill it in the same array. For example, if you said, tell me here, instead of printing A plus I, I can just say, you know what? Let's have an index variable, which is zero. And I have, let's say my original string was str. I can just say, you know what? str of index plus plus is equal to i plus a. I can fill it in the same array instead of printing. But I mean, you'll still have to maintain counts, etc. If you like the video, please do not forget to like, comment and share this video with all your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel to get notified about the new upcoming videos.